Hello guys and welcome to this video here. Uh, this video is going to cover the inverted commas secret menu, close inverted commas, on the Ford Fiesta Mark 7 dashboard. Now in front of me here you can see the instrument cluster. We have got the rev counter, we've got the speedometer, we've got the little uh, high beam and immobilizer flashing light there, fuel gauge at the bottom and then the odometer reading, the digital uh, reading at the top. It's not actually a secret menu, it's essentially a diagnostics menu. It will allow a Ford technician or somebody in a garage to actually do some checks on there. Uh, hence, there are some things on there I don't know the function of, but I will go through it and I will let you know what I do know the function of. Now, I'll just explain that before I go into the menu, the reason I found out about this was when I initially got this car, I took it for a test drive, and after about uh, two or three minutes, I glanced at the dials and I said, where's the temperature gauge? And then, of course, discovered that there isn't one. And I found that a little bit weird. It freaked me out a bit because I'm used to looking at a temperature gauge on a cluster of dials. And I know there are many cars that don't have one. Uh, but I come from an era where it was a very common thing. And whether it was on my motorbikes or on my cars, I was used to seeing a temperature gauge, unless, of course, it was an air-cooled one, which is a whole different kettle of fish. And... It turns out that there is a temperature gauge, but it can only be accessed through this menu. Now, to access the menu, your ignition needs to be switched off. Press and hold your trip meter reset button. Holding that in, turn your ignition on until the idiot lights come up on the dash. You can either start your car or just leave it as is. It doesn't matter. The word test will come up on the display. At that point, you can let go of the trip meter button. Press it once, it moves to the first of your test, which is gauge. This will do an instrument gauge sweep test, and it will sweep all the gauges to the maximum and back to the minimum. Again, this, was the, this one will be the LCD segment test. So like a digital watch, an LCD watch, this will show if all of your segments are lighting up correctly. And if, uh, if you've got a, a strange odometer reading, for example, you may have some segments out and this will show if that's the case. Press it again, you've got an LED light test, which is uh, all of your warning lights, your idiot lights on your dashboard. You've got your high beam, your immobilizer light, you've got all these down here. Some of them you won't need. For example, I've got the uh, diesel preheater coil down here and this is not a diesel car so it's obviously a common dashboard that they use across several models press it again you've got r80 press it again you've got er and a number press it again you've got e01 now those apparently relate to the instrument cluster firmware version and that's as much as i've been able to discern uh, from looking around next up we've got dt st60 dt0808 and that apparently is dtc codes and that's as much as i could find out about that i don't exactly know what they're for and we then have this which is just a random selection of numbers that moves up and down whether that's to do with the dtc codes i don't know but i've not been able to find out what that is or what that does press it again and we've got speed miles per hour uh, this obviously will show you the speed in miles per hour it can be a little bit confusing because it shows your miles and it shows um, tens ones and points of one so for example if you were going at 30 miles per hour this will actually show 300 but without the dot so at first you look at that and you think that must be faulty because i'm clearly not going 300 miles per hour that's actually saying you're going 30.0 miles per hour. Do be aware if you check that, that the final digit on there is point something of miles per hour. And exactly the same with kilometers per hour. So press it again and you get your speed in kilometers per hour. An interesting thing about this, I discovered that the reading of the digital one versus the reading of the analog one, when this reads, for example, 30 miles per hour, um, I'm actually doing about 26, 27 miles per hour on this, and I have actually confirmed this additionally with the um, sat-nav, with the GPS on that, uh, which tracks this one more accurately, accurately than this one. Um, so, interesting to know if there's a, a variance there, a difference. And if you want to know what you're doing in kilometres per hour, just out of curiosity, and you're in a miles per hour country, you could do that, or vice versa. Or you could just use it to compare the two. Press it again, we get this number here, and I don't know what that one does. I've not been able to find out anything about that. It's just a number, and it seems to be that number all of the time. It doesn't seem to alter. Next, we have TA, which is your 
uh, tachometer or engine speed, your rev counter essentially. This will show you in digital format what your revs are doing. So if you're doing 1,000 RPM, that will show 1,000 on there. Uh, obviously, because we're not going anywhere or doing anything, uh, it's not moving, as you can see. Next up, we've got um, we've got this T902C. I don't know what that is. I couldn't find any information regarding that. And OD apparently is the odometer roll count. Now, I'm a bit confused by this one, because from what I've read, it's the odometer roll count, which I would have taken as how many times it's rolled past 100,000 miles, perhaps. And now, mine's done over 100,000 miles, but it shows as 000, zero, zero, as you can see. So I'm not entirely sure what's, uh, what's what with that one. Next up, we have F, which is the fuel level sensor uh, signal, apparently. F9, which I think also relates to the fuel level uh, signal uh, somehow, but I'm not sure exactly how. FL, which apparently is the fuel level sensor signal um, in hexadecimal. So if you're into hexadecimal stuff, maybe you'll know a little bit about that. And FP, again, I think that has something to do with the fuel level sensor, uh, with them all beginning with F, of course. The next up is the important one, temperature. This one is actually your engine and coolant temperature. This is the one that I was looking for when... Um, when I wanted to just see how it was performing. And um, I have read a couple of things where some people said that they thought this was sort of ambient temperature inside the cabin, and that's definitely not the case. I have actually started and driven the car with this on, on this screen, and it will rise from wherever it's at, which is 17 degrees right now, which is probably about right. It's uh, it's below 10 outside, it's not very warm. It's, it's Scotland, it's springtime, you know, what can you expect? And it will rise up to about 80, 85-ish, and then even out there. And obviously, that will be where the thermostat opens, your fan comes on, etc. So that is your engine and coolant temperature. And next up, we've got BT, which is your battery voltage, um, which will, um, I believe, show the charging voltage when it's running. Next up is DTE, which is distance to empty in kilometres. And then we have um, this, which is a litres per 100 kilometre reading, which I'm assuming is an average consumption in litres per 100 kilometre, because on your standard dash, you can get an MPG figure. Now, litres per 100 kilometre confuses me, because obviously I work in MPG, but that's there should you want to know your average litres per 100 kilometres. And then we've got a... 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 8, I think. These are obviously some kind of code readings. I, um, I have no idea what they are. Um, actually, up to, up to 0 and then AA. And then we're going to the P's, which is precisely the same kind of thing. And obviously, these are specific code readings. And I couldn't really find any information as to what they are and what they do. So that's those. It then goes to this one. Uh, I've, I couldn't find anything at all on this one. I've not got the fog foggiest what this does. And then it goes back to gauge. And gauge, of course, is your instrument gauge sweep. So that's how you access those. You can access one of those. You can do it with or without the engine running. And then you can leave it on whichever one. If you pass it, you've got to cycle through all of them to get back to it. You cannot cycle back. And once you switch your ignition off, it will reset to its default of the um, odometer reading. And then when you switch it back on, it will reset back to whatever default you've got set. In my case, that's the number of miles to the next fill up. Uh, but that could be uh, your average MPG, your average miles per hour, uh, your odometer, uh, your trip reading or uh, again back to number of miles to the next fill up. One of the questions I've seen asked um, a few times on the forums is, is there any way to leave this set so that one of the preset things happens when you switch the ignition on, such as the gauge sweep, such as the coolant temperature, etc. And the answer, as far as I'm aware, is no, not certainly not that I know of, uh, because I would personally find having the coolant temperature there um, nice 
if if that was something that could be done um so unless anybody knows different if you do please pop it in the comments below uh, one thing i'd also like to ask is if any of you out there have a that are watching this have one of the keyless starts um the ones with the start button um i wonder if you would be good enough to check for me to see if uh, if the process to get into this menu remains the same i would really appreciate that hopefully this has been useful thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video